Welcome back, class, to our discussion of Spot It. So, remember, we have agreed that for these purposes, a Spot It deck satisfies three properties. Every card has exactly eight symbols on it. Every pair of cards share exactly one symbol in common. And no symbol appears on every card. But I want to answer now... What is the most cards a particular symbol can show up on? So, just as an example, I chose here all of the cards from the deck that have the symbol and hopefully by now you have noticed the clock. These are all the cards that have the clock on them. Now, you could ask yourself, okay, well, there are eight that have the clock on them. Could I make a ninth card that has the clock on it? Maybe one that's not in the deck. And I have already told you, there are cards that are not in the deck that could be in the deck, because the deck has 55 cards, but I could make a bigger one. And you will soon be able to, too. And I claim there's no way that I could possibly make a ninth card with a clock on it. Why? Well, I want to think about what happens when I look at a card other than these eight. Namely, when I look at a card other than these eight, it does not have a clock on it. Because remember, by assumption, there is a card in our deck that does not have a clock on it. Because remember, our third condition, the mystery condition that you might miss, uh, is that no symbol appears on every card. So I want to think about what happens when I look at this card compared to each of these. Okay. Namely, this card has a symbol in common with this one, namely the balloon. It has a symbol in common with this one, namely the hand, and then the carrot, and then the ice cube, and then the igloo, and then the OK symbol, and then, you'd think it would be easy by now, the music note, and finally, the light bulb. There we go. Again, I am definitely not playing Spot It with anyone for money. So we have our, our sim card in the middle. And I want to notice that because there are eight symbols on, a, on every Spot It card, there are eight symbols on this card, all of which are not the clock. And in fact, those eight symbols, each of them occurs on exactly one of these cards. Now, why is it that the hand, for example, can't show up on two of these cards? Well, the hand can't show up on two of these cards because if the hand was on, say, this card and this card, then that would mean that these two cards shared both the hand and the clock. But now they don't meet the requirement that every pair of cards shares exactly one symbol because these two share two. So what am I saying? I'm saying there can't be a ninth card with a clock on it. Why? Because imagine I do have a ninth card with a clock on it. Okay, so there's the clock. I can kind of draw a clock. I'll make a little circle. It can't have a, a symbol in common with this card. Why not? Because every symbol on this card shows up on one of these eight cards that also have a clock on them. And so any symbol from this card that I put here will then have both a clock and that additional symbol in common with one of these eight cards. Okay, and so that is a contradiction. And so that tells me that the answer to my question, what's the maximum number of cards a particular symbol can show up on, is that the maximum number is eight. Okay, and so here is a little proof with the words written out. Uh, so, for sake of contradiction. Suppose 
the symbol proof box shows up on nine plus cards. Then we're going to choose a card without proof box. And I'll call this card A. A has a none proof box symbol. in common with each of those nine plus cards. That's, again, just our assumption that every pair of cards have something in common. So it has a none proof box symbol in common with each of the nine plus cards. Ah, but 9 is more than 8. And so by the pigeonhole principle, that tells me there is a symbol on A that shows up on two proof box cards. Why? Because, well, A only has eight symbols on it. That is one of our axioms. A has eight symbols on it, so if I have nine plus cards, one of them has to be used twice. That's just the pigeonhole principle. But this is now a contradiction because those two plus square cards that share a symbol on A, those actually have two in common. And so that's a contradiction. So we get our very own proof box to end the proof. Now, notice a key sign that we have stumbled upon something interesting here is that in order to prove this, we've actually needed to use all three of our axioms. We needed to use that every card has exactly eight symbols. We needed to use that every pair of cards share a symbol. And we needed to use the fact that no symbol appears on every card. So that suggests we have a somewhat robust set of axioms or properties or whatever you want to call them here uh, for our spotted deck. And so we now know this question. The maximum number is 8. So technically, I didn't show you the maximum is 8. I showed you the maximum is at most 8. But if you believe me that this really is a spotted deck, that it really has all these properties, then I showed you that, in fact, this is a deck with 8 copies of a symbol on it. And so that shows me that the maximum is at least 8. And so we've technically now shown the maximum is at least eight because this is an example, and it's at most eight uh, by our proof, so that shows the maximum really is eight. Okay. Now I want to think, how big can a deck be? So I am going, in order to answer this question, to just pick a random card from the deck. So here is a random card. And I want to think, okay, how many cards could there be with an igloo on them? Well, there could be at most seven other cards with an igloo, right? Well, the clock, there could be at most seven others. Why? Because we proved every symbol shows up at most eight total times. And likewise, 
true of all of these other things. So I'll just write this out real quick. Okay. So I've written this out somewhat verbosely, but I want to make sure we're clear that I can go through all eight symbols on this card and apply our little lemma that we just proved that every symbol shows up on at most eight cards. And putting those together tells me symbol by symbol how many cards at most there could be for each of these other symbols. But remember, every card shares a symbol with this card. And so at most, there are seven plus seven plus seven plus blah, 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 seven times eight cards. But I have to remember to count this one. So what we've actually proven now I'll go ahead and call this a theorem. Every spot at deck has eight times seven plus one, which I'll go ahead and spare you multiplying that. It's 57 or fewer cards. Note, that's very far from proving that there is a spotted deck with 57 cards. So that's why I did not say the maximum size a spotted deck could have is 57 cards, because we definitely have not proven that. Uh, but we have proven that it has at most 57. Now, the way a spotted deck is defined, just about every subset of a spotted deck is also a spotted deck. Uh, right, so if I just threw half of these cards in the trash can here, uh, then what's left is still a spotted deck. The only thing that could have gone wrong is that I could have messed up and made it so that a symbol appears on every card, but I've picked uh, more than eight cards here so that you know that's definitely not the case. So I can't make any statements about how many cards a spotted deck has to have at a minimum, other than that it has to have, I guess, at least three you could prove. But at a maximum, we've now argued it could have... Well, the maximum is at most 57. What we're going to be interested in in the next video is trying to decide if there is one with 57 cards. So that's going to be our next question. Can we really make a spotted deck with 57 cards? All right. But for now, until next time, be well.